let's look at this example problem so if you like you can post the video at this time and work it out by yourself i'm going to read the question now two identical conducting spheres are held using insulating gloves a distance x apart initially the charges on each sphere are plus 3 pico coulombs so remember this is a prefix and that represents pico so it's pico coulombs and the other one a negative charge negative 12 pico coulombs now the two spheres are touched together and then they are returned back to the same distance apart that distance x so the question part a of this problem is asking what is the final charge on each sphere so part a initially we have these two identical conducting spheres so on one of these we have an excess positive charge 3 pico coulombs and on the other one an excess negative charge 12 pico coulombs so i'll call this one uh, charge q1 initial and then this one q2 initial at the beginning and then what you're going to see is that they are touched a physical contact is made between the two and then again they are separated to that same distance x distance apart so then we want to know what is the final charge on particle one so q1 f and q 2f that's what we need to find out so uh, what we can do is that we can use conservation of charge from conservation of charge conservation of electric charge to be exact we'll get the initial charge of the system equals the final charge of the system so the system here system is equal to q1 plus q2 so keep that in mind that's the, that's a very important thing identifying the system so the system does not going to gain charge within the system if there are element there will be some charge transfer so that's what's actually going to happen here so uh, then we'll have from conservation of charge q1 initial plus q so that's a q it's not a nine it's a q so q1 initial plus q2 initial is equal to q1 final plus q2 final so this is like kind of an equation form of the conservation of charge now the most important thing in this question or in a question like this since it's given that the two spheres are identical that's a very important thing that means their dimensions their radii everything is the same they are made out of the same material they are identical as a result the final charge will be distributed equally on these two spheres so i can write over here q1 final is equal to q2 final that is the most important fact in a problem like this when you have two identical conducting spheres initially they are separated they have different amount of charges but when they are made to touch one another the total charge will be distributed equally on the surface of these conducting spheres so that that's that's how we we're going to solve this problem so then to the left hand side i'm going to simply substitute these values i have plus 3.0 pico coulombs plus uh, minus 12 pico coulombs equals i'll write two times q1 final and then i'm going to solve for uh, q1 q1 final which is equal to q2 final will be 
3 minus 12 will be minus 9. So minus 9 picocoulombs divided by 2. Why is that? Because there's this 2, right? We have to divide this entire thing by 2. And that value is going to equal to the final charge on sphere 1 and the final charge on sphere 2. So then we'll have minus 4.5 picocoulombs. So that's the final charge on uh, each of these spheres. So that completes part A of this problem. So now let's try the second part of the problem. Is the final electric force between the two charges increased, decreased or the same when compared with the initial electric force between the two charges? So this shows you on the left hand side, this shows you uh, the situation before touching the spheres together and on the right hand side it shows you after touching the two spheres together. So before starting st touching you have a plus 3 picocoulombs and minus 12 picocoulombs. So then obviously the forces are attractive in nature. So there's going to be an attractive force between the two objects. So let me call that F1. Those two are F1. And over here, uh, the forces are repulsive. So let me call this force F2 and this one has an equal and an opposite, uh, you know, equal magnitude and opposite in direction. So that is F2. Now we are not interested in the, uh, the directions of these forces. We just want to figure out the magnitudes. So let's use Coulomb's law. So from Coulomb's law, we can find the magnitude of uh, each of these forces. So F1 magnitude is K magnitude of uh, the 3 picocoulomb charge. So I'll write 3 times 10 to the power minus 12 times uh, magnitude of the 12 picocoulomb charge, which is simply 12 times 10 to the power minus 12 uh, coulombs and then divide by x squared because that's the separation. So we are not given x uh, in this particular problem, but that is fine. So when we try to simplify this further, we'll get k over x squared is equal to 36 times 10 to the power minus 24 newtons. Similarly, we can calculate the magnitude of these re repulsive forces uh, after touching the two spheres together. So then we'll have F2, magnitude of F2 is equal to K times. Now you can see the charges are identical. The charge, they both have the same amount of charge. So when we multiply these two, gain magnitudes only times 10 to the power minus 12 coulombs times 4.5 times 10 to the power minus 12 coulombs divided by x squared. So then simplifying this, we'll get k over x squared and up to two sig figs, we are going to get 20 point times 10 to the power minus 24 newtons. Okay, so, so from here, uh, you can consider magnitude wise if one force is larger than the F2 force. So we get, so we see that magnitude of F1 force is greater than the magnitude of the F2 force. So if you look at the question, uh, this is part B. In part B, uh, is the final electric force between the two spheres increased, decreased, or the same? So we can see it has decreased. So then we can conclude the final, final uh, E force, I'll write E force, electrostatic force or electric force, E force between the two spheres has decreased.
So that's the conclusion that we uh, can arrive uh, for this particular problem, part B of this problem. One important thing, keep in mind the charges. You can see there are positive and negative. Uh, the polarity is the sign. But whenever we use Coulomb's law to find the magnitude of the electrostatic force, we simply ignore the sign. We just substitute the magnitude of the charge. So that's why I, I put instead of minus 12, just 12 picocoulombs. And over here, in, even though I had this negative 4.5 picocoulombs in both charges, I put their sizes because we are looking at the size. Just to remind you again, uh, because it's very important, Coulomb's law gives you the magnitude of the electrostatic force and that is equal to the constant K times the charge of one particle multiplied by the charge of the other particle over the separation squared, R squared. So keep that in mind, that's what we call the Coulomb's law.